The Expat Insider Survey ranks Denmark 53rd out of 53 countries in the subcategory of finding friends. 66% of people surveyed reported it challenging to make local friends in Denmark compared to the global average of 36. Why is it more challenging to make friends with Danes and what can you do about it? Today, we're going to talk about Danish culture, our own experiences, and some tips for making friends in Denmark to give you some answers. I'm Derek Hartman, and I've been living in Denmark since 2017, and you're listening to What Are You Doing in Denmark, the podcast that helps you make Denmark make sense. I'm Annie Samples, and I've been living in Denmark since 2019, and making friends here has been challenging for both of us. So if you feel that too, you're not alone. And this episode is going to help you understand how to overcome the friendship challenge that we've all faced. So we should start out maybe explaining the survey a little bit. So yeah. it's it's conducted by an organization called Internations. Um, and that's a group that is really established in a bunch of different countries to help people that are international living in new cities and new places to meet others and socialize. I've been to a few of their events in Copenhagen. Oh, really? Have you ever been? No, I've never been. That's so interesting. I've never heard about it until this very moment. And yeah. I'm just kind of like laughing because <laughs> I just was so clueless coming into this like the entire situation of living in Denmark. I'd never heard any of these stats. I'd, I I had just heard like, you're not going to make friends. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I guess, uh, you know, it's interesting that statistically that is backed up with data. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so yes. it's not just anecdotal. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I think it's going to int be interesting to kind of dive into some of their data yeah, and for share sure. a little bit of our experiences. And, you know, there are some tips that can help you with that because somebody had to be 53rd in that category. Somebody and, had to be 53rd. Yeah. And I, I feel like going back to our like Yanta Law episode, like Denmark's like, yeah, that's fine. It's okay. We can be less. You yeah, know? I yeah. think, but uh, and that maybe has some <laughs> contributing factors yeah. as well. Oh my gosh. But, yeah, this survey was the, the 10th year of the survey and okay. over 12,000 people in these 53 countries were surveyed. And overall, Denmark ranked 51 oh. out of 53. Yikes. But it really, I think it just is because of the categories. So okay. um, quality of life, ease of settling in, working abroad, personal mm. finance, and the expat essentials are the categories. Mm. So the... Probably no surprise, like the working abroad, like yeah. the, people love the work-life balance here. Right, right. Yeah. So in that way, they scored yeah, very I'm well. I'm really surprised, yeah. like working abroad didn't like up that a lot in quality yeah. of life. Do people yeah. not like the quality of life here? Well, that's. I think those are probably the, the, like the, the categories. redeeming ones. Yeah, okay. I think those were like the redeeming ones. And then, but of course, like the personal finance, we yeah. know that it is more expensive. That quality of life isn't free. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. And I think the the settling in. Yeah. And, and I guess probably quality of life maybe bleeds into some of those other things as far as mm. the ability to make yeah. friends and feel like you belong here. Valid. Um, because some other statistics that jumped out at me were 35% mm. of those who responded from Denmark said that they had difficulty in acclimating. Mm, yeah. That's about twice the global average of 18%. Yikes. And 29% of people that responded stated yeah. they didn't feel at home in Denmark. That's so that's a big so part sad. of it. Yeah, yeah. I'm so curious. What are the expat essentials? Yeah. So that like was, to know. Okay. that was a lot of other things as far as like finding housing, which is probably also something that would mm. be a little bit harder for the fact that most people who move to Denmark, many of them, of course, mm -hmm. settle in Copenhagen. So yeah. there's a housing issue in Copenhagen, just yeah. like in a lot of Nordic capitals and other European capitals and yeah. big cities really all around the world. So I think uh, that could be some of the contributing factors. Yeah, that makes but sense. On the, the friendship side, which is what we're going to focus on yeah, today, yeah. <laughs> um, I think culture is a, a big part of that. Yeah, right? yeah. And speaking of like, ease of settling in and what have you. I think that Denmark is such a small country and there's such a certain way of doing things mm. that um, a lot of Danes don't really even know what needs to be explained to us because they just know it as the way things are done and it makes sense. And so a lot of them don't know how to reach out and how to help us like flailing expats <laughs> at times. And maybe we would see that as being good friends, you know? Yeah. 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 yeah literally like a, a fish out of water flailing oh <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I know you were on Gamora in Denmark talking yeah. about that a little bit recently. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I'm trying to remember which time Gamora. Uh, what was I talking about? I think about some of the um, <laughs> issues that people have settling and sort of some oh, of the yeah, things that Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. 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 So... Um, you know, for me moving here as a mom, just like knowing what to do with my kids, knowing how to socialize my kids. My kids had no problem making friends, which is awesome. And like I said, I moved here just having the expectation of making no friends. 
Um, but it would have been nice to have some, you know, like when I see this, the expat essentials as part of these categories, I'm like, oh, I wish I'd had like a binder yeah. of just like all of the information, like a Sherpa, you know, all of these things to just sort of hold my hand. And I'd love to be that person for somebody someday. And I hope that through the content that I make that I'm that. But I think it is so cozy to have like somebody that was born and raised here be able to walk you through that whole process as well because you're like, oh, I'm getting the real deal. You 100%. Know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's a lot of what people struggle with. And friends is part of that mm -hmm. because, of course, settling in is easier when you have a friend, especially a local friend, a Danish friend who mm -hmm. can tell you, oh, this is why we do this thing that maybe seems different. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But we all know it. Yeah, and when you get I, the why behind it, that yeah. is so helpful. And I think often when, you know, with my Danish friends, when we have these conversations, they usually say, I didn't even know that that was different. I didn't know. Right. I don't know if you've heard this, but I've, I've had many Danish people yes. say to me, <laughs> I grew up thinking that the Danish flag was just the birthday flag and everybody put oh. that flag out for their birthday. That's hilarious. Isn't that funny? Oh my gosh, because, that's so sweet. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're listening, you're not familiar. The yeah. the Danish flag, the Donnebro, is beloved in Denmark, but it's yeah. also something that you decorate for your birthdays with or store sales and things like that. So You see that thing everywhere, <laughs> I must say. <laughs> but, and I love it. And I think that there's things like that that maybe once we understand it, yeah, it's no longer puzzling. Exactly. But um, you can just sort of move on with your day. Oh, yeah. You know, you're yeah. like, okay, that makes sense. We're going. But speaking of the why, why do you think it is difficult to make friends, make Danish friends yeah. in Denmark? I think a lot of it is, I think a lot of it is culturally. So, of course, there's some nuances like you're, you're competing with people's existing close friends. Yeah. So many Danes yes. have uh, a close group of friends that they grew up with. And you know, now that your yes. kids are here, your boys are in school, the oldest ones, and yeah. they're probably going to have a lot of those friends <laughs> forever. forever. Yeah. yeah, I love that for them. When people ask me why I think it's hard to make friends in Denmark, I'm like, I know exactly why. I'm seeing it firsthand. And I think that the system in place is actually awesome. Yeah. And in previous episodes, we've talked about this too, because the way that they set up and socialize these kids, yes, gives them an opportunity to have friends for life. And with getting that sort of out of the way, they aren't having to worry about these sorts of things in the future. Yeah. Um, so they've got their friends on lock. They can focus on their interests, their hobbies, their career, their education. And so I think it's brilliant in that way. But when you come in from the outside, oh, yeah. you're like, you're kind of, it's not that you're stonewalled. It's not that people are unfriendly. No. It's just, just like you're saying, like competing with existing close friends, there's only so many people that can fit in a Copenhagen apartment, right. you know, like that too. 10 people, 10 people and more is like, it's not so hygge anymore, you yeah, know? So yeah. I had somebody early on kind of explain to me, which I thought was very kind that, yeah. um, that part of the reason that maybe I wasn't invited to certain things. Mm -hmm. This is from somebody that was on uh, for context was on a sports team that I oh. was playing on oh. and maybe noticed that they were talking about an, uh, a gathering that mm. I was not at or awkward. invited to, which was yeah. a little awkward. Yeah. <laughs> it was nice that she noticed. <laughs> yeah. And she said to me, um, yeah, you know, most of us have like very small apartments and we yeah. can't have more than, yeah, like eight or 10 mm. people at the, at the flat. And maybe that's why. Like, so did you ever get like rotated us. into that? Um, eventually, but I will say like it wasn't, I didn't feel like it was very consistent. I didn't feel, I often felt That's like sad. I was extending the invitation more, of course, Aww. because I had no... What you know, sports thing is this? this I didn't was, know you were athletic. This was dodgeball, yeah. Oh, so, that's so, so athletic, cool. yeah. yeah. So, not so a real athletic. sport. <laughs> I, well, it takes a lot of agility. So. Actually, the way that they yeah. play here, it does. That's yeah, a, I'm so a sure. whole different conversation, but if yeah. they grow up playing handball, they can really... <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah handball get, is so silly. I, I love it. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I don't think it's that they're like cold or unfriendly. It's just yeah. they prefer partially because of necessity yeah. having a smaller group yeah yeah partially because of how they grew up with a smaller group but mm. also because it's harder to entertain yeah. a large group yeah. and it kind of just you see it in 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 the culture and 100%. how people socialize and i do think it, it it takes time and it takes work to make friends anywhere you go 100 percent. yeah i mean i think we do have to acknowledge that as much as we've made it work here, there are, you know, this survey didn't come from nowhere. Exactly. And, and it can be, it can be a yeah, challenge. I, but I do always want to say. It's overcomable, yeah. yeah. It is overcomable, exactly. I think that me coming in thinking that I would just never have friends actually really worked to my advantage. <laughs> I mean, yes, it was hard and I didn't like that. But 
with the expectation of not having it, then it happening organically. It, it was really nice and like pleasant in that way. I wasn't like, why aren't these people being friends with me? You know right. what I'm saying? So, but I don't want to invalidate anybody's experience that is coming sure. in. Cause when you come in and you're single or just need that support system, yeah. it is, yeah, a, a very valid human need that everybody has to have met. So I understand that struggle. And, um, yeah, I just it does it does take a lot of patience and time, unfortunately. But it, I think it would anywhere, you yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, no, definitely. And I think like we're both lucky. I, I'm glad that you mentioned it. Like mm. we did not come here single. We came here with our partners. Yeah. I think it would be really tough. And oh I really gosh. admire the people who come here on their own. Yeah. And do make it work and end up thriving. And yeah. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of ways to do that. Um, mm. Luckily. If you're in maybe a university city yes. or you're you're somewhere that maybe has uh, more international people, that'll yeah. be a little bit easier to break into yes. than groups of, of Danes that have known each other for years and years. But it just takes a little bit longer mm. to do that. Yeah. I, I think culturally, you also mentioned Jentalaun, uh, and if you haven't listened to that episode yeah. that we did, definitely go back and if you're curious what it is or yeah. don't know... Um, give that one a listen. But I think that's part of it, too. I think there's a little bit of a feeling of, oh, why would you want to be friends with me? Mm. There's a little bit of that, like, I don't want to take up your <laughs> yeah. time or attention. Right. And I do think that it's maybe a little bit of that understated um, persona that, yeah. um, you know, is sort of the ethos uh, here a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. I also saw, well... Culturally, what I find interesting, and I wonder if this is more of a Copenhagen thing, but, um, you know, as we know, like, you're not really going to get to know your neighbors so well. Right. People are very private here. Um, but I also sort of respect that in a lot of ways, because when you live in a city like Copenhagen, it can feel like such a small town sometimes. Mm. And you're you kind of have this eventually you figure out like you're gonna see these people all the time so like you can just save your energy you don't need to like stop every single time and like have a full-fledged conversation you don't even have to wave sometimes you sometimes know? that's nice because you're just <laughs> you know, like, like i am in a hurry i have to get on a train exactly and i don't have time but hi hi is exactly like all you really have time for and that can be nice i know i do appreciate that especially when i'm like with many children <laughs> and i'm struggling i'm just like hey or just I see you, you know, and that's enough. And, and everybody in Jutland is spitting out their coffee as we really? say that Copenhagen is a small city. Oh my God, I know. <laughs> no, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I do leave yeah. the house. You and do I, run into people. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. See a lot, exactly. So. And I think that's so cozy yeah. and I love it and I never thought I would feel like that. Um, but pretty much everywhere I go, I run into somebody that I know. Yeah. And um, it's very cozy, but I don't always have the time to chat. But I know I'm going to sure. see him again. No, definitely, and uh, that's so fine. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. It's it sometimes can can be nice avoiding those sort of small talk conversations. Yeah. I know you'll hear that a lot from from Danish people. Yeah, and of course, this is painting with a broad brush, right? Not of everybody is all of these things all of the time. Mm. Um, but you do hear a lot. I I don't like small talk. That's not really part of our culture, and that can make it harder to. Mm. Make those initial connections with people if you're not having those, you know, small talk leads it's to true. big talk and it's then true. big talk leads to friendship. And if you don't like small talk, it can yeah. be, <laughs> yeah, it can be, it's like, a, it's like fishing with no bait, you know? It's interesting because Danes say that they don't like small talk, but they do love to talk about the weather. <sighs> That's the only. That's like my that's, definition of small talk to me. Yeah, I don't know what the, it, yeah. that's the cons yeah, that's the like consummate small talk is yeah. the, the weather and maybe. Any upcoming holidays? Yeah. Things like that. <laughs> yeah. 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 What are you having for where, Yule? Where duck? are you going for summer holiday? For, yeah. yeah. What are you having for Yule? Uh, two kinds of potatoes. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. So those are good ways. Those are nice little tips to get in there with the Danes, I yeah. think. And then eventually you can say, what's your childhood trauma? I don't know. Where do you go from there? <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> tough. Like after the weather. Uh, yeah. Where do you go from what, there? Yeah. What do you do? It's... um yeah, but that, I mean, that's a good start. <laughs> yeah, it's a good start and just feel it out and be organic. But uh, something else that I find to be a challenge is like if I am hanging out with like a group of Danes, typically I will be the only one speaking English yeah. and I hate to make people switch over for me. 100%. It's really weird for me to like go to events and just sort of be the only one there, like not talking to anybody. And I don't mind. I like going and I like observing and people watching and everything. And I don't expect people to cater to me. But uh, it does make social events quite challenging if they're like strictly Danish events. 
Have you ever been in a situation like that? Very much. And I think think even the situation I described a little bit of having played on a a team with a lot of Danes and sometimes noticing that I wasn't getting these invites, I think part of it was... Maybe it was unconscious as yeah. well, or <laughs> yeah. I, uh, but I, I don't think it was unconsciously to leave me out. But I do think some of it was the language, and yeah. that, because sometimes, as the one who doesn't speak Danish, mm. or even now I speak some, but I'm not very good, um, it can make it difficult to converse with me in Danish. Yeah. I almost feel like the skunk at the garden party, like yeah. making everybody switch, and kind of like oh. you described, you feel like a burden, yeah, you feel like. Oh, now I'm sitting down at the table, so everybody has to like switch to English. Switch to English. Sorry, cater to me. Yeah, and I do think that there's a little bit of ease in yeah having it just native just speakers speak, exactly, Let and not speak even native language. Yeah, yeah, and not not even speaking, but also just understanding mm. references and so true. culture and where different cities are and things like that. Like not you having know. to like. <laughs> explain to everything like we're little babies exactly. yes yeah so i think there's a little bit of that and especially right away mm. you may feel that even more than after you're here a few years and we do yeah understand a little bit more yeah 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 and that makes sense what do you think the resolution to something like that is i think it's i think it's tough to have like one sweeping thing that will just make it easier but i do think there are some tips and and we'll get into some of those those tips but i think the big thing is to just have your expectations um planted in reality which is that the the reality being you know part of this survey was the ability to make friends with locals Mm. well if locals is danes that may be harder but that doesn't mean you won't make friends there are other people living in denmark that you may become friends with totally um i think another aspect of this is also colleagues mm. um there is a high level of collegiality and mm. friendship in the professional workspace but i know compared to my experience in the u.s it was very much like let's all get beers after work anybody want to do happy hour this friday like just kind of spontaneous and you don't feel like that here i feel like it's planned and when it is there's a friday bar or a company event mm-hmm. and most people do attend because it's you know on the calendar it's on the calendar mm-hmm. we know danes like to plan that can be an True. aspect that makes it more difficult too um so i think all of these things once you kind of unlock that cultural part mm-hmm. start to make sense that it, it's not you mm-hmm. it's uh, a culture of really planning things, spontaneity exists, but maybe that makes it harder to socialize if you come from a culture that's less planned. Yeah, 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 <laughs> less yeah. less organized. Totally. Um, it's just, yeah, it takes a lot of years, really, of adapting and observing and accepting, you know? And it's just a position I never thought that I would be in, but it's fine, you know, with everything that we get in return, it's a very fair trade-off. And just like you said, you can build this community that can end up being quite international. And that's like, I have more of an international community now. People always ask me like, oh, don't you like miss the diversity of the US? But I have a much more diverse group of friends now that I live here from all over the world than I did when I lived in, you know, like Portland, Oregon. Everybody was from Portland, Oregon. (laughs) And that was cool too. But yeah, I've learned so much and um, had so many incredible friendships and had my eyes open to so many things with the opportunity that I've had here to like really have to go outside my comfort zone. Yeah. So. No, I, I agree. I think it's really nice to point that out that you have people from not just Denmark, but other places yeah. and, and leading into them because those are the people that are going to be more open to friends. They mm-hmm. don't have that network of friends that they grew up with, went mm-hmm. to school with, and they're going to be looking for, yeah. for friends yeah. too. So one analogy that's been developed over the years that could maybe lend a little insight into um, sort of the social culture in in Denmark compared to wherever people come from is uh, the coconut and peach analogy. Mm. So uh, this is basically the idea that your native culture might be a peach or coconut. Mm. Um, It's a label that was coined by two culture experts, and I'll butcher their names, uh, Fons Tom. Salon Paz, uh, and Charles Hampton Turner. So the idea being that peach cultures are 
Um, similar to like the US or Brazil, people tend to be very soft with new acquaintances. They smile frequently at strangers. They quickly move to like having a first name basis with somebody. They'll share information about themselves pretty freely. And they may even ask personal questions of people that they don't know super well. Yeah. But after they kind of have these first interactions, um, you suddenly get to like the hard shell in the center, the pit. Uh, so like the peach pit. And that's kind ah. of like that person protecting themselves from uh, getting into like a more serious relationship or friendship before. What do you think an example of that would be like a pit? So um, I think that maybe the idea that you would have no problem, I, I, sometimes uh, I do this myself, where whether you're sitting on an airplane with somebody for a long flight or mm. maybe you are traveling and you do a food tour, like you, people that are from peach cultures are very comfortable making a friend that they know in advance is only going to be for like that one hour food tour. And you'll yeah. talk about how many kids you have, where you went to university, like what your uh, dream job would be, things like <laughs> that are maybe considered a bit more personal to somebody from a coconut culture. Mm, mm -hmm. And then you have no problem just saying, okay, have a great trip and see then leaving. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you never, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. But you have no problem having these conversations that some people would consider a little bit more personal. Mm. Yeah. That's so interesting. So it kind of lends to that idea of Danes being a bit private. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And maybe coming from what we would call a coconut culture. So that's the idea that um, in Denmark and other sort of coconut cultures, people are initially more closed off from those that they don't have a friendship with already. Mm. Um, maybe they don't smile at strangers on the street. They don't ask casual acquaintances those personal questions. Um, and they wouldn't really give personal information to somebody that they don't know yeah, intimately. Yeah. Mm. Um, but over time, as you get to know somebody from a coconut culture, they will gradually become friendlier and warmer. And uh, that relationship will be built up slowly and tend to last longer. So the idea oh. of like a coconut having a hard shell, but yeah. inside it's the juice, the juice. <laughs> <laughs> and that coconut meat, I meat. guess you call it. I don't know. Yeah. You get that meat, a lot of meat hearty juice relationship. Inside. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What a thing. But yeah, I guess the inverse of like a peach. Yeah. So a peach is soft on the outside with a hard pit in the center. Mm. And then it's sort of the opposite for a coconut culture. I feel sort of ashamed of coming from a peach culture for some reason. That hard pit sounds so like sinister, it does. you know? It, it oh my God. It does a little bit. Yeah. I mean, but I think, and look, I don't think anybody is a hundred percent one thing to ever. Totally. And I like to, you know, I think the longer that we've been here, we, we touched on it a bit earlier, is I like to think that I am trying to take the best things of Denmark and keep the best things, mm. retain the best things from from where I came from in the U.S. And yeah. I, I think, you know, uh, everybody would love maybe a peach coconut smoothie, right? Oh, it like, sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, I, think there, I don't think that either one is, is bad, but yeah. I think that that's a good descriptor of the culture class. Yeah, I think yeah. that's so true. That's so interesting how like yin and yang they are. Yeah. But I think it's also really interesting. Um, I feel like our generation and younger is becoming so global, even here mm. in Denmark with, you know, social media, the internet, everything like that. Um, you know, even now I, I will get Danes around my age, you know, saying something nice about my kids or asking me where I got something. Yeah. I remember even when I first moved here like four or five years ago, you know, I was with another American friend and somebody like complimented my dress and she was like, oh my gosh, that never happens. That's yeah. so crazy. But now the landscape is becoming, I feel slightly more open, but what do you think? I think that that, sound, that sounds really, mm -hmm. really nice. I actually do miss that. And it's funny because the compliment thing kind mm -hmm. of stuck out to me a yeah. lot of, I, it doesn't have to lead to any kind of conversation. It doesn't even have to be small talk, but just mm -hmm. to tell somebody, oh, I like your bag. Yeah. Or where did you get that shirt? Like, that's a nice thing. Yeah. And sure, it may be that, that kind of thing. I've heard, uh, I've heard Danes and even people from mm -hmm. other cultures say maybe that that's a little superficial or that's yeah, not, yeah, uh, yeah. not appreciated or it doesn't seem genuine. And I'm like, oh, no, I can tell you like coming from the U.S. where that's very common. Right. I think we're kind of brought up like one thing that we're kind of taught growing up is if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it at all. Yeah. And then also like a compliment is a nice way to like, like making somebody smile is yeah. like one of the best things you can do in the day. You know, yeah. we're kind of raised with like these ideas. Yeah. And I think that it comes from 
that like smiles are free and like yeah. compliments are I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a treasure. a treasure. I don't know. Yeah. You know? Like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. we're like kind of raised with these ideals yeah. and yeah. Yeah, like I do miss that over, you know, eventually it's mm. it's nice when that when that does happen organically. I don't think it's yeah. superficial. No, and I think like the peach think... thing, I think it's sometimes looked at as superficial, but to me it's Yeah. Not. <laughs> no, I know. And every time I, I can think of so many circumstances where I've been a peach, you know, in sure. you know, circumstances where I've like, you know, been at a restaurant or an event or whatever, and I know that I might not see this person again. And um I really enjoy the time that I've spent with yeah. them and I, you know, sometimes think about them later and I'm like, cool, yeah. if I see them around, awesome. But it just maybe it doesn't happen, but it doesn't mean that I wasn't like my genuine self in that moment and didn't enjoy connecting with that person and enjoy finding out information about them as well. Yeah. I always think it's neat. Like yeah. I, I like making those like vacation friends or those, um, yeah. just short, even just chatting with somebody, you know, if you're not like rushing out of mm -hmm. the house and trying to catch a train, it can be nice having a little yeah. bit of a conversation, even yeah. if it's just pointless. E it doesn't have to be about the weather. It can be about yeah. <laughs> like how perfect would it be if like, you know, we have this environment where, yeah, you can like rush to a train without feeling held up. But then also if you have the time, exactly. you can like compliment your friend's new haircut, you know, yeah. and really mean it, you know, and that's yeah. nice. Yeah. I like the, I like the best of both. I do sometimes feel a reverse culture shock when, when I'm back in, in the U.S. or mm -hmm. e sometimes even when I'm traveling abroad and a place is a little bit <laughs> more, mm -hmm. a little bit more open and warm and yeah. somebody that I don't know starts talking to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so what's your reaction to something like that? Oh, I mean, it can really depend. Yeah. Um, for example, being in, uh, like I say, a grocery store in the yeah. U.S. and somebody starts talking to me, like even like pointing at the things that I have in my shopping cart and saying yes. like, oh, I love these. Yeah. Or, oh, my, like, my son oh. loves these. And I'm like, well, that's great. Yeah. Wonderful. That, yeah. Uh, we don't need to, you know, and sometimes it feels a little off-putting. Yeah. But then I can also remember times where I, uh, Mike and I were watching our nephews and we took them out to dinner and they were being a little rowdy, a little loud. So, of course, we took them to a restaurant like yeah. where you can do that. Cool. And like, a, you know, a, a couple, they were a bit older. You could tell that their kids were grown. Maybe they had grandkids or something. And they came over and were just talking to them like, oh, like, you Aww. know. It, it, so, like, that was really nice. And yeah. I'm not saying that that wouldn't happen here. Right. But it was nice to have that interaction. And maybe they could tell that we were a little bit uneasy with yeah. how the kids were behaving. And that really put me at ease to be like, oh, okay, Aww, they're enjoying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're but what, enjoying seeing us. What's so interesting? They're enjoying. We're not a nuisance. <laughs> yeah. What's interesting is that you know we, Denmark does have this perception of not being so warm, um, or not making small talk or what. But I also wonder how much of that is attributed to like maybe just not understanding what people are saying. Because I remember when I first Ooh, moved right. here, old ladies would like say things to me a lot, and I'd uh, sometimes I'd just be like, ha ha, or you know, ask them to repeat themselves in English. And it'd usually be something like, you have a beautiful family. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, actually really so, nice, random things. And so I wonder how much people are getting, but not realizing that right. they're getting. But yeah. now that I'm like understanding more Danish, I'm like, oh, that's so nice. You know, I, I you know, of course, I was just going to give an example of an old woman bringing up how bad the weather was, <laughs> of course. But, and you that's, know. you know, and I think that that kind of thing does happen where yeah. maybe you're waiting for that train and... Yeah. It's late and people kind of look at each other and like, you know, you yes. kind of feel, so you do feel like you're in it together, even with strangers or right. maybe they do talk about the weather and, ah, uh, yeah, we need our umbrellas today, yeah. you know, and that can be, that can really make your day different. Yeah. Like it can add something to your day and lift you up a little bit. Totally. So that is nice. Yeah, and once cozy. you understand Danish, like, oh my gosh, you notice it helps it so much. And I, I feel like I still have very much just like a base level of understanding Danish. So <laughs> that would Same. be a really good tip to, yeah. you know, just get in there, get, get on that Danish. It's something that I, mm, you know, I give myself a hard time about not learning it right away, but you know, I had a nine month old, I, then it was COVID yeah. and then I had another baby, but you know what? Just, just do the best you can. If you can learn Danish, it's going to help. It so definitely much. unlocks. You know, it's going to make you feel cozier. Yeah. You know, it's fun. And you know what's going on around you. <laughs> that is helpful. Is, in the beginning, you often feel like you're just getting told off all the time. <laughs> yeah. So. That is rough. Yeah. I feel like, um. There's right. definitely like a high volume of typically older women who are going to tell you how things are done in society. And a lot of times it's actually right. But sometimes 
I think it can be a bit much. Um, but yeah, learning the rules. What are some examples of some like societal rules that you would feel would be helpful when you first moved here? Oh yeah, there's there's a lot of little things that are like written or unwritten. Yeah, and you don't always know whether it's just like. You can only have, maybe you go through this uh, if you take public transportation, mm-hmm. but like you can only have two strollers or prams yeah. on a bus at one time. Oof. Not everybody knows that. Yeah. <laughs> but somebody yeah. will tell you if you're... I still try to cram on there, but they, they're like, <laughs> uh-uh, nice try. Yeah. That's rough. Yeah, something, it's uh, other societal rules. Um, I feel like it has a lot to do with kids and babies mm. because something that I was told a lot, get a hat on your baby, get some socks on your baby. Don't Ooh. leave the house without a hat and socks on your baby. Yeah. What else is there? A lot of it with biking, of course. Sure. Yeah. So much with biking. And it's really, you know, people were still say i can't believe you're able to bike in copenhagen it's really not so bad i just like stay to the right yeah. be sure to use my signals keep my lights on we hear that start. bell you just kind of yeah keep going something that's really slowly. funny is that like you know in the u.s you wouldn't use a horn or a bell unless like you were upset with somebody or something yeah. was about to happen but apparently the societal rule here is like if you're just like about to pass somebody or coming up beside someone and they think they don't you they don't see you you're supposed to use the bell so all the time my husband would be like oh my god like i'm not doing anything wrong i promise but i'm like no they're just like letting you know that they're by you and just to make sure you don't like swerve all over it's like an awareness bell not a problem (laughs) bell (laughs) but yeah it can feel like you're getting bells rung at you yeah yeah but you know when you think about most danish bike bells are you know like a pleasant little ding (laughs) so i'm like oh hey you know, I've taken it as like a little safety measure and I, I appreciate it. It's like a little hello, a little a little yeah. ride by it's cozy. greeting. Yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> a ride by greeting. I love it. Yeah. But I think in some ways, um, you know, living here, mm. coming from a peach society mm. has made me a little more coconut. Yeah. But not sure. in a not in a bad way. And I like I I, I kind of like going back and forth between yeah, the two. You can really like code yeah. switch. Well, I think that's a good place to wrap things up for now, but we will come back and finish this conversation next week. We've got some listener advice and some tips that we can get to. Yeah, I'm excited to share some tips on how to make Danish friends with you guys in the next episode. Yeah, so thanks for listening and watching, and we'll be back in your feed next week. Yeah, be safe. Hi, hi. (laughs) 